In this lecture, we are going to talk about part three of matrices. So we we'll start with addition. The goal of this section is to understand how to add two matrices and also what are the properties of matrix addition. In order to add two matrices, first, we have to make sure that they have the same dimension. For example, we cannot add matrix A, which is one, two, four, six, and matrix B, which is one, zero, minus one, two, three, eight. What's the reason? Because matrix A is two by two, matrix B is two by three. So their dimension doesn't match. And hence, we cannot add these two matrices. And then if they are the same dimension, matrix matrix addition is done by adding the corresponding elements of the same position. So let's call this C, C is equal to A plus B. The i's row and j's column of C is one element, which can be determined by summing up the corresponding element from A and the corresponding element from J for all i and j. One example, matrix A is defined here, matrix B here. So this element is A11 plus B11. A11 is equal to one. B11 is equal to three. So it's four. This element is a two one base b sub two one. This one is a sub two one plus b sub two one, which is minus two minus two, and so on. So this is how we can add two matrices. To subtract matrices, we simply can multiply a matrix by minus one and then add those two matrices up. All right. So there are some properties for matrix addition. We are going to talk about those properties now. All right, let's assume matrices A, B, and C have the same size. And also assume that alpha and beta are two scalars. Right. The first property is commutative property of matrix addition. What does that mean? A plus B is equal to B plus A. The second property is association, associated. Associative property of matrix addition. What does that mean? A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. The third one, associative property. of multiplication. So when we multiply a matrix by a scalar, then it could be also, uh, the associative law could be applied. So The other property is distributive. Distributive property. What does that mean? Alpha, which is a scalar multiplied by A plus B is equal to alpha A plus alpha B. So alpha multiplied by each component. So the next one, 
again, distributive property, but for metrics, the scale of. What does that mean? Alpha plus beta multiplied by matrix A is equal to alpha A plus beta A. And finally, the additive identity. So this feature is A, matrix A plus matrix zero of the same dimension is equal to matrix A. All right, so these are some of the properties for matrix addition. Matrix vector product. The goal of this part is first to understand the dimensions, then we can multiply a matrix by a vector, what are the dimension requirements, and then see how we can multiply vectors and matrices. For the first part, for the dimension part, let's assume you have matrix A with dimension M plus N. And you want to multiply matrix A by a vector. So this vector, uh, the dimension of this vector should be in this format. So in general, the number of columns in matrix A should be equal to the number of rows in the vector. So let's go to the next slide. To multiply a vector and a matrix, it is important that the dimensions are proper. First, if the product is, for example, A multiplied by X, where A is the matrix, and X is the vector. All right, the number of columns in the matrix, so as I said, A is M by N, the number of columns in A should be equal to the number of rows in the vector. So uh, we can also represent the product the other way around. What does that mean? First, the vector appears and then the matrix. In that case, the number of columns in the vector must be equal to the number of rows in the matrix. In all of these, uh, what happens simply, then you say matrix A of let's say dimension M plus N multiplied by vector X dimension uh, T multiplied by one in order for this multiplication to be feasible, n should be equal to t, which means x should be dimensional n plus one. All right, examples of the matrix and vector that could be multiplied is matrix A, which is three by five, and vector x, which is five by one. Matrix A, which is four by two, and vector x, which is two plus multiplied by one. So ax has a definition in this case. So an expected dimension from the product is given by the outer values. What are the outer values? Here is one and three. So in this case, a multiplied by x is a three by one matrix. In this case, it's a four by one metrics. Let's try to have a general rule here. Matrix A, M by N, multiplied by vector X, N by one. The result is going to be, let's call the result matrix B, is going to be M by one, the outer values. All right, it also holds the other way around. Let's say you have vector X transpose, which is one by M multiplied by matrix A, which is M by N. All right, as I said, first we have to confirm that these two values are the same, which is the case here. And the result is going to be matrix B, which is in the, this case vector B. And the dimensions one multiplied by N. All right, now we want to see how we can multiply a vector and a matrix. What's going to be the result, the outcome? So we define uh, this matrix A, which is N by M, and uh, multiplied by a M vector. What does that mean? Our vector X is M by one. So 
each element of the result, so as we said, A n by m x m by one. So the result is going to be y, which is n by one. So for i from one to n, this is how we can determine element i of matrix y or vector y. Examples. This is matrix A, which is two by three. It has two rows and it has three columns. This is vector X, which is three by one. So the outcome is going to be vector Y, which is two by one. All right. Element one of vector Y. So Y sub one is sigma J from one to M. What is M here? M is three. M is the common value between these two. All right, A, I, J, A, one, J, X, J. All right. So, and as I said, M is three here. So it's going to be A, one, three, A, one, one, X, one, plus A, one, two, X, two, plus A, one, three, X, three. A, one, one is zero, multiplied by X, one, which is two, plus, a12 is 2 multiplied by x2, which is 1, plus a13, which is minus 1, multiplied by x3, which is minus 1. It's going to be 0 plus 2 plus 1, which is 3. I suggest you practice this to find the element 2 of y. So y2 is also sigma j from 1 to 3, a2j, xj. If you replace this, you are also going to get the same value here, minus four. All right. So another simple way of doing this instead of writing that equation is to divide matrix A by its rows. So it has one row here, two rows, and then multiply each element of this row by this column vector. So zero by two, two by one, minus one by two. And the same, so this gives you the first element and you do the same thing for the second row. So you multiply each element of this row by each element of this column vector. And it gives you the second element here. Let's do this for the scenario where the vector appears first. So here the vector appears first. So what we are going to do, we are going to find columns here. So first we multiply this vector and this column going to be three. And then we multiply this row with this column. Again, it's going to give us the second element. And about the dimensions, our vector is one by three. Our matrix is three by two. So it leads to a one by two vector. Now let's take a look at some examples of uh, matrix vector multiplication and vector addition. So matrix A is defined as one, two, zero, five. And vector X is defined, so this is two by two. Vector X is defined as minus one, six. A scalar alpha is defined as two. So we want to find A multiplied by alpha X. one six which is minus two twelve and then a which is one two zero five multiplied by alpha x which is minus two twelve as i said we find each row of a first we see what's the dimension of the outcome so this is two by one two by two the result is going to be two by one it has two elements the first element is multiplication of this row with this column. One multiplied by minus two, minus two. Two multiplied by 12, 12. 24 plus 24, 22. And zero multiplied by minus. All right. 
this is the solution. And a general rule for uh, not just for matrix vector multiplication, but also for matrix matrix multiplication. If you have matrix M by N, let's say matrix A, and you want to multiply it by matrix B, which is N by P, the result is going to be M by P, the outer dimensions, and we have to make sure that the inner dimensions are equal. Or in other words, the number of columns in matrix A, number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in matrix B. So this is something very important to consider. All right, uh, this was part three of matrices. We talked about matrix addition and its properties. Matrix addition, let's say matrix A and B. The first thing is dimensions of A and B are equal, same dimension. Then we talked about matrix vector multiplication. The important thing to consider for matrix vector, vector multiplication was if we have matrix A, M by N, we can multiply it by a vector N by one. What does that mean? Number of columns in matrix A should be the number of elements in vector x. We also can multiply a vector from the left-hand side, but in that case, x should be one by m. So the general rule was the inner dimension should be equal, and the result is going to be the outer dimension. So there is going to be n, one by n, and the result of this is going to be b m by one. All right, that is all for part three metrics.